This is 2019 AP Chemistry Free Response Question number 6. So this is investigating the reaction of nitrogen dioxide, which is a byproduct of the combustion of fossil fuels. Um, and we're given this reaction that at elevated temperatures, nitrogen dioxide decomposes into nitrogen monoxide and oxygen gas. So you are told that the concentration of a sample of NO2 is monitored as it decomposes and is recorded on the graph directly below. The two graphs that follow it are derived from the original data. So if we look at the three graphs provided, put them all on here, there we go. We see that we have concentration versus time, we have inverse of concentration versus time, and we have natural log of concentration versus time, kind of our typical three kinetics graphs here. Looking at these, we see this one is pretty curved. This one is pretty linear. And this one is pretty curved. So first part of the question, asks us to explain how the graphs indicate that the reaction is second order. And that's going back again to looking at which one of these produces a linear plot. And the inverse of the concentration versus time is the one that is consistent with a second order reaction. So we know that this is second order because the plot of one over concentration versus time is linear. So we are then asked to write the rate law for the decomposition of NO2. We know that it is second order from the data that's been provided. So our rate will be equal to the rate constant times the concentration of NO2 squared. From the fact that we know the reaction is second order. Part C now gives us two possible mechanisms for the decomposition reaction. And we're asked um, to determine if each of these mechanisms is consistent with the rate law that we wrote in part B and to justify our answer. So looking at mechanism one, we see that step one is our slow step, and our slow step, also known as our rate limiting step, is gonna be the one that dictates the rate law for our reaction uh, for our reaction as a whole, for our overall process. So what we wanna to do to determine if our rate, if our mechanism is consistent with the rate law we wrote above, is to use the mechanism to write the rate law. If they're the same, it's consistent. If they're not, it's not. So for this one, the rate of our slow step is going to be the rate constant for that times NO2 1 times NO2 again. So this will be squared. Again, when we know the mechanism for a reaction, we can write the rate law for each step based on just the coefficients. So we know the stoichiometry of this reaction means that we can figure out the reaction orders based only on that stoichiometry. So <clears throat> since step one is our slow step, we can write the rate law for step one. We don't need to do anything else here. There are no intermediates in the rate law as we have it written. So we don't need to replace anything. We don't need to do any more work. This is the rate law for the overall reaction. And this is the same as the rate law that we wrote in part B. So this one is consistent. So mechanism one is a yes. Since step one is rate limiting or rate determining, uh, 
means our overall rate law is the same as the step one rate law. which we wrote here. And this is the same as from part one. So we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for mechanism two. This is also asking us, is mechanism two consistent with the rate law we wrote in part B? Justify your answer. So this one has the second step being slow, which means we're probably going to have to do more work. So for this one, we want to write the rate law for step two. Which is uh, the rate for step two is equal to the rate constant for step two times the concentration of N2O4. But N2O4 is an intermediate, which means we need to replace this. <coughs> so from step one, we can use the fact that this is reversible even if you're not told it's reversible, you have to assume it's reversible, but we can use that fact to say that since, oops, since step one is fast and reversible, the rate of the forward reaction for step one is gonna be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction for step one, and therefore their rate laws will be equal. So the forward rate law for step one is the rate constant times NO2 squared. The reverse is the reverse rate constant times N2O4. So when we rearrange stuff, we now find that N2O4 is equivalent to some constants times the concentration of NO2 squared. So the constants all just end up getting clumped together. So what this amounts to is that N2O4 in your rate law is going to get replaced by NO2 squared. So if we do that, our overall rate law is going to be that the rate is equal to K times NO2 squared, which is also the same as in part B, so this is also potentially consistent. So this is also a yes. This is consistent. Either of these mechanisms could be consistent with the data that's been provided, um, because the overall rate law based on either mechanism, ends up